Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon. I'm Carrie from Two Big Girls Crafting and this afternoon I'm going to share with you a quick way to make a watercolour background. Um, there are lots and lots of watercolour techniques out there. Um, I like this one because it's kind of not too difficult. It's In fact, it's really easy. Um, I was going to try and say it's not too messy, but actually anything I do that involves water gets messy. So I'm going to be messy. You don't have to be. <laughs> um, that's about it, really. So shall we get on with it? That's enough about me. Let me turn this camera around. I've got a new phone, so I'm hoping that it will all be OK. Let's move this forward. OK, this is the card I shared a f two weeks ago. No, last week. Yeah, a week yesterday. Hi, Fiona. Um, I'm, I'm talking about this background here is what I'm going to helpfully show you how I made it. Um, so what do you need? I use a water spritz, a spritzer bottle filled with water. And I label mine because I do use them for alcohol as well. Oh, this one needs topping up. Let me just put some water. So how do I open this? It twists the wrong way. <laughs> so let's fill this up with a bit of water. Hi, Ali. How are you all doing? And just adding a drop of water in there. <coughs> <coughs> My apologies. I am recovering from a chest infection, which came rather inconveniently. Hi, Shiloh. Came rather inconveniently, considering we have our annual Two Big Girls Crafting Retreat weekend, a whole weekend of crafting, starting Saturday. Well, actually, it starts Friday, really, because we, we have a get-together on the Friday evening. We go out for a meal, which is really lovely. But, and... So we're kind of up to our, well, is everything, am I still there? What's going on here? Something happened. I don't know what's going on. Am I live? Can somebody say if I'm still there? I think you've frozen. Oh, no. Hello. I'm live now. Phew. Thank you. The light seems to have just dipped off and disappeared, but hey ho. Anyway, so what do we need to make this background? Well, because it's a very wet process, just your voice. Okay. How bizarre. Can you see my image now? Can you see me waving? <laughs> Oh dear, technical issues aren't my favourite. Uh, I can't, uh, I can see, I think I can see me on my laptop. Yeah, I, I can. Oh, cool. thank you very much, Fiona. So what are we going to use for this? Oh, well, I'm going to be using the Fluid 100 watercolour paper from Stamping Up. Um. Watercolor paper is recommended because you're waving back. Good girl. I'm seeing you Friday. Um, because why we want watercolor paper? Because it will absorb and withstand far more water. Um, some watercolor techniques. I I do do dry watercolor techniques. So that's for another day. So I've got my piece of card what am i going to put on it well i could use my ink pads these are water-based ink pads they're the classic stamping pad from stamping up or i could use my ring inkers um what i shall do is i've got this oh the other thing that it is very handy to have on hand is kitchen towel Great believer in kitchen towel. Great stuff. Okay, so how would I use an ink pad? Well, I like to use my acrylic blocks as palettes. So I could put my 
tap my ink onto there. So the colours I'm chosen for today are Polish Pink, Mango Melody, which you just about see on there, and Daffodil Delight. But I can open it. <laughs> uh, I like this colour combination of the pink, the orange and the yellow. It's one of my favourite colour combos. Andrea, am I still live? Yeah. OK, so I've got my ink on the block. What do I do next? Well, I'm going to take my water spritzer. And I'm going to spritz the ink on the block to make it. Good and runny. Now, I have my piece of paper. I'm actually going to cut this piece of paper, watercolour paper, in half. I can't remember how long it is. Hang on. 18, so it's going to be 9. So that I can show you the difference, if there is any difference, between using re and your ink pad. So we have one piece of pa well, patterned paper on my days. Watercolour paper that's already got a few spritzes and spatches on it. So all I'm going to do is literally start by picking up that on there. But one thing I did forget to do. <laughs> Good one, Ali. I get it everywhere. Um, I, I forgot to do was actually spritz the paper. Uh, by spritzing the paper, you're adding water to the paper. It just makes the ink move around a lot more. So as you can see, I've picked up some more uh, pink there. That's OK. I'm going to go in and I'm just dabbing it on. Can you see how it just runs across the page? It's really good fun. So I am going to keep spritzing the whole lot because I just want it to get nice and good and wet. Look at that! Isn't it gorgeous? Now you could, if you so desired, get a paper straw and blow I don't have a straw, I'm just blowing <laughs> across your paper. Which is I love this effect. I love the way the colours work together. But this colour along this edge is getting a bit muddy. So all I'm going to do is just tap it gently on the edge with my piece of kitchen roll. Because it's just going to take the bulk of the ink away. Now, there's a white patch here. So I'm going to pick up there. And I want it more pink at that end. Look at that, isn't it gorgeous? It's so pretty. Let's dab again. Now, you do please make sure you have a clean table underneath. You can, if you wish, dab the whole thing with a kitchen roll, piece of kitchen roll. And look how that colour has gone down. It's so much softer. So I quite like the soft look, but I want a darker look. So all I'm going to do is re-spritz it. Remember, this is a wet watercolour finish. And I am going to add some more to it by dabbing and dipping. And I don't think I know any other words for it. It's not a proper watercolour, as in, you know, beautiful painting. Some people are so talented, they can do those things. I'm not an artist. I am a creator of mess. <laughs> so I'm going to wipe my panel, my panel, my acrylic block clean and dry. I'm going to dab my surface because I forgot to put a piece of kitchen roll down for before I start it. And I'm just going to take that piece there off of there because I don't want those bits. I'm going to leave that to dry. Now, 
actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to give it a quick burst with my heat gun. I'm hoping you can still hear me. Uh, fingers crossed, everything's going okay. You see how it moves when you uh, blow it. <laughs> uh, I'm not, it's not going to drop. So we'll put that to one side just to dry. Hopefully I'm not going to keep freezing, but uh, I don't know. I don't think the connection's too great this afternoon. So on to, in fact, let's just pop that under there. Uh, being very careful because I actually have some ink on there already and I don't want to transfer it. And the thing with water-based ink is you get it wet, it will transfer. So this time I'm going to use my reinkers, and we can compare and contrast. So let's place some drops on here. It always amazes me that that dark drop is going to turn into yellow. <laughs> and I've got orange over here. The orange I'm using is actually Mango Melody, which is one of my favourites. But this little beauty, Polish Pink, is... Hi, Darcy! Polish Pink is going to be leaving us in the end of April. We'll be getting some new ink colours. And this little beauty is going to go. So if you want it, may I suggest just put your orders in sooner rather than later. We're also going to be having uh, some colour changes. So that'll be fun to look out for. Anyway. Back to the work. So I'm going to wet my paper with my spritzer filled with water because I'm not using alcohol. And I have done that before, spritzed it full of alcohol when I'm supposed to be doing a watercolour. So that's now there. Now, this bit, <laughs> I'm going to very carefully add water to these colours. And can you see it's already starting to spritz and splatter over there? It's so much fun. So this is not a precise technique. Oh, look at that colour. <laughs> but it is a great deal of fun. Whoa, look at it go. <laughs> I'm going to dab that bit off. I'm going to go back in there with a bit more yellow. Wow, this is gorgeous. And then we're going to pop in that bright pink. Look at that go. <laughs> okay, so can you see here the little rivulets of ink? <laughs> Look at the mess on my hands. <laughs> oh, good job, I don't care. If you do not like getting messy, wear gloves. So back to these little rivulets. That's where the ink, the colour, is actually finding the water droplets that are there. So I don't want that effect for today. So I'm going to spray it again so that I can make sure that every bit is going to get covered. So let's go back up here with a drop of pink. The pink has gone really orangey, I think, from the yellow, which is really rather beautiful. I think that's rather lovely. It is very red. Now, I wonder if we take some Rebienka and just drop a little drop on there very gently and let it move around. See if we can get a bit of a stronger pink vibe going in there. Wow. Now I'm going to have to spritz that because I don't want any hard lines. But it certainly did give us a drop more pink looking piece. Now I've got a nice bit going there and I don't want this sitting on this edge either. 
So this is a great technique for just sitting down and playing with, you know, just get your papers, your stuff out and have some fun. Don't, don't worry about it. Now, what are you going to do with these? Well, your options are wide open. We can stamp onto these. We can create die cuts from them. We can even do more to them once they're dry. Uh, let's get rid of that lumpy, lumpy bit there. So, all right, I'm very messy. That needs to dry. Put the lid on the reinker, or there will be a spillage and I will be crying. So let's get this out the way. Let's clean this bit up. Always work in an area that you don't mind getting messy because you're going to get messy. So let's bring the heat tool back in and get this drying off. You can, of course, leave it to dry naturally. Will you get a different look? Yeah, I think think your colours get a bit deeper if you leave it to dry naturally uh, but if you're impatient like I am then a heat tool is good <laughs> remember to keep it moving you don't want it to burn the paper look at the back of there so there we go that's not it's not a hundred percent dry it will take much longer to dry than that, but it's usable. Oh, not usable. I can move it around without fear of making more mess. I always dry a bit on the back as well so that it helps with the curling. The other thing you can do if it is curling is whilst it's still warm is put some weight on it. Um, it, you do have to leave it there for a bit and let it sit and dry. But I'm not going to do that because I'm too impatient and I have got too much to do. So that's the one using the reinkers. So that's reinkers. Andrea's just said it looks like a nice sunset. And this is the one using the ink pads. Same colours, same method, different results. And that's what's going to happen every time you do this. You're never, ever going to get two bits the same. It's always going to be unique. And I think they're really rather beautiful. You can, with a little bit of um, patience and practice, create an ombre effect almost like I've done here. Now, I don't really want to touch this too much because of my dirty, because of the state of my hands. I've had fun. So I've now got these two pieces. What am I going to do with them? Well, I'm actually not going to do anything with them today because today was all about creating the background. But I'm going to just show you a couple of things we could do to them. One of the things we could do is to actually go back in with our water spritzer but this time I'm going to open it and I'm going to flick I'm going to flick water onto it now the next thing you need to do is with your piece of kitchen roll is dab it can you see how it bleaches almost the colour out that takes the color out so if i spritz this all over and take my a cleaner piece of kitchen i say cleaner because none of this is really that clean and dab it whilst it's still wet we get this fabulous effect see this is how it started out quite uniform and then we just created these areas that have got splotches. We can make them as big or as small as you like. I like that. But if you like a little bit of brazzly dazzly, what about if you were to use your 
what's it called? Wink of Stella. So I'm going to splat splattergate this all over my yes tie dye. I love that. I saw a fabulous cake um, decorating video the other day for tie dye that I sent to my daughter, who is the queen of making cakes in our family. I'm not sure this is showing up. Are you getting the glitter? Oh, I see I've got lots there now. <laughs> this is what happens when I start getting messy. I get really messy. <laughs> so there we have. It's splattered with Wink of Stella. I am picking up the Wink of Stella from the puddle I spritz down here. Oh, I'm not wasting it. So, let's do some bigger splotches. Now, that is probably really difficult to see on the screen. But in real life, <laughs> rest assured, this is very, very sparkly. Let me just try something. That's without, that's with. Oh, look. Is that yeah, picking? You picking it up now? Yeah. <laughs> How pretty is that? Look at the state of this place. Well, <laughs> I've had fun, so that's okay. And I get to clean up. Oh, look, some of it went on that one. Oh, what a shame. Oh, I might actually just go for it and just spritz it, spritz it, splatter. Why can't I take the lid off my thing? Oh, that's why. I'm just going to put a few on there as well because I've started, so I might as well finish. All sparkled. There we go. So this is the wrong way round, Carrie. This is for the reinkers. This is with the ink pads. I think they're rather pretty. You can, of course, do anything you like with them. You can die cut them. You can punch them. You can use them as backgrounds. You can stamp onto them. You can create. Whatever you like, these are to be treated just like you would a pattern paper, except they are thicker and they are not fully dry yet. So please, please, please make sure you, even though I've dried it with the heat tool, it's going to take another, a few hours to dry completely. But once they are dry, they'll be well worth playing with. Anyway. Next week, as I was saying, is our next weekend is our weekend retreat, a full weekend of crafty goodness with a bunch of brilliant people having lots of fun and laughter, as well as creating lots of beautiful, beautiful projects. So am I going to be here next Monday? Fingers crossed I will be here next Monday and you never know, I might actually revisit these and turn them into two cards and show you two different ways of using them. Anyway, that's it from me this week. Take care, look after yourselves. Oh, and if you're in the south of England, keep your fingers crossed the snow's gone by Thursday. Bye!